the facial nerve, the seventh cranial nerve. This is a mixed cranial nerve. It has many components and supplies diverse areas. It arises from the pons. The motor component supplies the superficial muscles of the face, which control facial expression. It also supplies motor function to the stapetius muscle in the middle ear. This muscle controls the ossicles, thus calibrating the amount of sound which reaches the inner ear. Hyperacusis or undue sensitivity to sound may result in the affected ear. The facial nerve also supplies the tongue with sensation of taste, but only to the anterior two-thirds. The parasympathetic component supplies the sublingual and submandibular salivary glands. The parasympathetic component also supplies the lacrimal glands. Examination of the facial nerve begins with observation of the patient's face. Look for symmetry of the facial features such as the wrinkles of the forehead and the nasolabial folds. Observe the eyes for evidence of excessive or deficient tear production. Also ask the patient if they are experiencing excessive saliva production or suffer from dryness of the mouth. Ask the patient if they experience distorted hearing. Next, ask the patient to perform some active movements which test the muscles of facial expression. Ask them to lift up their eyebrows and then frown, screw up their eyes tightly, whistle, show their teeth and to blow out their cheeks. Okay, that's good. Can I get you to squeeze your lips together tightly? Again, don't let me pull them apart. That's fine. Can I get you to blow out your cheeks? That's fine. Can I get you to whistle? And show me your teeth. Fine, thank you very much. The taste function is not routinely assessed. But if you wish to carry out this test, use four substances, sweet, sour, salty and bitter. With a cotton bud, touch specific areas on the tongue and check if they have identified the sensation correctly. The patient must rinse their mouth between different tests. With upper motor neuron lesion, only the lower part of the face is affected, whereas in lower motor neuron lesions, there will be weakness in the upper and lower parts of the face. Bell's palsy is a unilateral paralysis of the lower motor neurons. There will be facial distortions such as sagging of the mouth and dribbling. It would also present with a loss of taste, inability to frown or close their eyes, and have excessively watery eyes. It may also affect hearing in the form of hyperacusis. Other lesions affecting the facial nerve include tumors and cerebrovascular accidents.